Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to tonight's big event, our talk on t Tennessee whiskey versus bourbon. My name is Camper English, and today for this talk, I'm going to be your sort of moderator. I'm a cocktail writer and spirits writer, and I've been writing about um, these topics for more than 15 years to introduce our uh, first panelist uh, guest, uh, Brian Hera. I'm, we're seeing if I pronounced the name right. That's exactly right, Brian Hera. Uh, Camper, thanks for having me on. But hello, everyone. Uh, Brian Hera. Um, you can find me on Sippin' Corn. It's a blog that I have, S-I-P-P-N-C-O-R-N. And I also wrote a book. It's called Bourbon Justice. Um, and you can find me at bourbonjustice.com as well. And I think we're going to have a bit of a surprise uh, for everyone today. Uh, that's different than the normal talk about uh, whether Tennessee whiskey is is bourbon or not. Great, thanks. And um, hey, Lou, could you <laughs> introduce yourself, please? Ken, uh, good evening. I'm uh, I'm Lou Bryson. I'm a, uh, a whiskey writer. I've uh, been doing that, uh, wow, um, about 24, 25 years. Uh, I was the uh, managing editor of Whiskey Advocate for 20 years, and uh, I'm currently a senior drinks writer for the Daily Beast. Just like to tell a very brief story, the only time in my life that I've been thrown out of a bar was because of this argument. Uh, a friend of mine and I went into a bar in, uh, in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and asked them what they had for bourbon, and the guy said, we have Jack. And being a younger, brasher man, uh, I said, oh, Jack's not bourbon. And my friend Sam said, yeah, it's not bourbon. It's Tennessee whiskey. And we got into it with the bartender. And after a couple minutes, the woman who was tended bar with him picked up the bottle of Jack and said, hey, you know, they're right. It doesn't say bourbon on this anywhere. And the bartender said, I don't care what it says. You're out of here. Never even got a drink. The main difference um, between Tennessee whiskey and bourbon is not just that Tennessee whiskey is distilled in Tennessee, but that uh, it is typically filtered after distillation before going into the barrel through charcoal. And when you're talking bourbon, it's got to be made in the United States. And it's then has requirements that uh, that it shares with with Tennessee whiskey. And that's majority corn. So 51 percent corn. Then it's got proof max maximums for both distillation uh, and then barrel entry proof. So it can't be distilled to more than 160 proof. It can't go into the barrel at more than 125 proof. It's got to be stored in new oak, new charred oak containers, not necessarily a barrel. It could be a bucket, I suppose, as long as it's a first use um, oak. It doesn't have to be American oak, but it usually is. Like the idea of, I always like to picture it in a, in a wooden box. Uh, exactly. I, yeah, if, you, yeah. if you can make a box watertight, you can, uh, you can make bourbon. And uh, because it's whiskey, um, the, the U.S. regulation says that it has to be bottled at no less than, than, uh, than 80 proof. Pretty much everyone agrees that, that on, bourbon can only be made in the United States. What are the regulations for Tennessee whiskey? Um, can I just say ditto see above and then <laughs> add the LCP? It has the exact same requirements that I just mentioned for bourbon except it's got to be uh, distilled in Tennessee, and then it has to go through the Lincoln County process. This, this filtration uh, through um, uh, sugar, uh, sugar maple charcoal. Why can't, why can't Virginia break a Tennessee law, I guess? Well, I, what, it, what it helps, what the Tennessee law helps to do was, would be to prove that there's some sort of consumer fraud there. If, if you're distilling something in Virginia and calling it Tennessee, uh, then you've got truth and labeling issue and consumer fraud type issues. And the states are supposed to cooperate to some extent um, and give laws from the other states their full faith and credit. It does not seem fair that a, uh, an entire style of whiskey should be blocked off and not allowed to be made. And well, you, because... you can make it. You can make it. And you could make for a Virginia distiller could pre-barreling filter it's distillate through layers of sugar, oak, oak um, maple charcoal, and, and say that it's charcoal mellowed. I see that on a, on a lot of bottles. That's in a lot of Kentucky bottles. 
Um, you could make up your own name, you know, Virginia Mellowed, whatever you want to do. Um, so you can still do that process. It's not like it's a, a patent um, or it's not even a patentable process that, it, that could be protected. Anyone can charcoal mellow and a lot of folks do. You just can't call it Tennessee whiskey. Uh, Lou, if you wouldn't mind, could you talk about what is the Lincoln County process? What, what's, what's going on? Sure. Um, as, uh, as I believe Brian said, uh, or, or it might've been you, I can't, can't recall. And I apologize for that. Um, there are, there are a variety of ways of doing it, actually doing the process, but the, the heart of the process is a post-distillation, pre-barreling, filtration, leaching, mellowing through, uh, charcoal. And the charcoal is traditionally sugar maple charcoal, um, it is traditionally burned in open air and and uh, subjected to a a, a controlled burn uh, as opposed to a uh, a contained smolder, which is how you usually make charcoal. Um, and then you uh, you fill a bed with this charcoal, uh, a vat of some kind, uh, fill it ten feet deep, and then that's where the interesting parts for me come in. Uh, Jack Daniels trickles whiskey through it. Um, they have these cross arms and they have whiskey is pumped into them. They got holes punched in them. I'm probably giving a crude thing. I don't think they just actually punched. Them. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's like a, it's like a, uh, a, a drip irrigation system almost. And then that trickles through the, uh, the charcoal and, and comes out the bottom. Um, I believe traditionally there was a wool blanket at the bottom. I don't, I don't believe they use the wool blanket anymore. Um, Dickel, on the other hand, uh, because they say that they found that the whiskey that they made in the winter tasted better, they actually fill the bed with whiskey just right up to the top before letting any out, and they chill it. Um, so the bed is actually chilled. So you're getting some, I would assume you're getting some chill filtration effect as well. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I mean, you could do that any way you want. I would assume you could do it with a pipe, like a 10 foot pipe, four inches across and just pfft, call them whiskey down through it. If that's what you wanted to do. I, I mean, there's no, there's no rules about how big the bed is except 10 feet deep. Uh, but nothing about how wide it has to be, how fast or slow the rate of flow is. Um, it's just the, the pre-barreled whiskey has to go through that 10 feet of charcoal. Right. And as uh, Peter put in the comments, he asked if there was, how long does the spirit remain in contact with the charcoal? And that's not regulated. It's no. uh, up, up to the producer to, to make yeah. that decision. So it could be, you know, it could have more impact or, or less impact. Yeah. But chill filtration, typically what the purpose of that is, is so that your whiskey won't turn cloudy when it gets cold. There are fatty oils floating around in there. And if your proof is low enough and you shipping it to Scandinavia, um, for example, it can look cloudy in the bottle. A lot of people don't like that. So if it's beneath a certain proof, it tends to be chill filtered. And that typically goes through like cellulose, a, a paper style filter at a, a cold temperature. So, I mean, is there a difference? I, uh, there's, there's definitely a difference. I mean, in the, you know, the classic matchup is, is Jim Beam white label and, and Jack black and, you know, blindfolded, everyone on online tonight with us could tell the difference. So uh, Dickel made a bourbon or released yeah. a bourbon. <laughs> Maybe they've been making bourbon the whole time. Uh, tell us about that. <laughs> um, and the first question I asked Nicole when I got her on the phone was, so what did you do different? And she's like, I, nothing. It's the, it's the same mash bill. It's the same uh, distillation process. It's the same Lincoln County process. <laughs> excuse me it's just that some of the barrels produce a different whiskey and i mean that's that's part and parcel of uh blending which is i mean this is why the master blender is often a, a more important person at the distillery than the distiller and the distillery manager um she said you know that, that they get a lot of these lighter barrels or lighter whiskey from from a, a bunch of barrels um and she said, while well, the um, the typical stuff with that waxy fruit and the and the heavier oak, she said 
that's Dickel number 12. That's, that's our, you know, that's, that's the most characteristic expression of George Dickel. Um, but she said, you know, up until now, they've essentially been taking these bourbon barrels and blending them into that because they want number 12 to taste like number 12. Um, and she thought that's kind of a waste. Um, so she started pulling them aside and, and blending them and came up with this. And, and this is <laughs> an eight year old bourbon at 90 proof for 33 bucks. I'm like, you're my hero. Oh, you right. are my hero right there. I said after that, after she had essentially said that, that yes, it's bourbon, but it's also Tennessee whiskey. It is the Lincoln County process that allows it to be Tennessee whiskey. And I'm like, okay, but I mean, let's face it, Dickel is Dickel's the little brother. Okay. It's it's up to them to stick a finger in Jack Daniels' eyes. That's what they do. That's what they did. And they yeah. did it beautifully. <laughs> so so what did Jack Daniels have to say about it? So I got in touch with Jeff Arnett. And I'm not yet like, oh, absolutely, it's bourbon. But, well, and, and the interesting the people on the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and and then he said the same thing. It's both. So and, and it, is, you... it is bourbon, but the Lincoln County process also makes it Tennessee whiskey, and that's how they choose to label it. And and they go beyond that though for the marketers. So maybe it's an issue <laughs> that, the, that the marketers want to call it only Tennessee whiskey because their website currently, right now, as as of today, says after Jeff explains what the Lincoln County process is on the website. He goes through this extra step. He says it imparts the distinctive smoothness, which a lot of us don't like the word, but the smoothness <laughs> that folks expect from Jack Daniels and part of what makes our whiskey what it is, a Tennessee whiskey, and here it goes, and not a bourbon. I was looking for something about the subtractive process because the, the, the order of arguments for is Tennessee whiskey bourbon starts as both of you guys said starts with the lincoln county process you know but 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 it's the same everything else is the same but this is before it goes into the barrel all those sorts of things it's adding something and then everyone says no it's not adding anything and and they're right it's it's subtracting it's subtractive so there is a federal regulation that prohibits you from taking out too much of what is customarily known as bourbon. You can't take out more than 15% of these, of these fatty acids, these esters. Um, there's, there's other soluble solids and those sorts of things. You, you're not supposed to filter that out because that's part of the joy of bourbon is that yeah, you're, you, making, you're making vodka. Yeah, you're making, yeah, once you start taking everything out, you might as well just have vodka. So what I would love to see, and this this will settle the argument, I'd like to see this scientific study of Jack Daniel's distillate before and after, and, and the Dickel distillate before and after, and anyone else who makes Tennessee whiskey. And then you can say, unequivocally, under the federal regulation, whether too much was taken out, and can it still be called bourbon? Maybe the only other thing that a lot of folks say during the argument is when they do, but, 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 is that there are some Kentucky bourbons that are charcoal filtered. And that tends to be after, uh, after dumping the barrel, not beforehand. Um, but there, uh, back in the day when uh, Jack Daniels was massive and a little brand called Ezra Brooks tried to compete directly against him, they were a, uh, just merchant bottler in the in the fifties, they charcoal filtered so they could put that on the on the bottles and to be like Jack Daniels. So it happens, and I think that's another great argument that people have. It's it's still bourbon, folks. I think the only thin sliver <laughs> is this issue of of how much are they stripping out, and it's too much. Otherwise, it's it's bourbon, folks. It's bourbon, yeah.